Positive Thing So What? I'm Carol and welcome to the show. What have we got in store for you today? Well, at the time of filming this episode, most of Australia is in lockdown. How do you get through each and every day when there's nowhere to go and nothing to do outside of your house? Well, today Andrew's going to share with us some tips and strategies to get through the day, to make the most of every single day. And part of that is establishing a routine, getting up at the same time every morning, being active every day, making your bed every day. And part of your routine could be watching this show every week and joining in the five minute fitness routine. So you're going to meet lots of wonderful experts to help us with our well-being. And if you're over 50 and single, have you thought about dating again? Because today we meet Cam and Phil. They met online, started dating again after 30 years and eventually got married again later in life, proving it's never too late for love. Now here's Andrew to help us bounce through the day. Hi everyone and welcome to your wellness zap. Today Andrew, the well-known author and speaker, is going to be sharing with us how to make the most of your day. Some simple tips and strategies and plans to help you bounce through your day. Andrew, can't wait to hear all about it. Thank you very much, Carol. Yes, I'm excited to share some ideas today because one thing we're all going to have is a day. And once this day's over, there's going to be another day tomorrow. And if we can maximise our day and get the most out of our day and feel the best possible we can during the day, we're going to have a much better outcome in not just our health and well-being, but in our life, which is a good thing. So I think before I get into the nuts and bolts and give you some ideas and suggestions, the first question I want to ask you is this. Why would you want to create a routine in your day? What's the reason for you? What excites you? Who are the people that you want to have more energy for? What are the things you want to be healthier so that you can do? I want you to really stop and think about who else will be impacted by the thoughts, the choices and the actions that you take. Because what I've found is when I really focus on what's important to me, it's, more, it's easier for me to create change and, and introduce new things. So that's the first little thing I want to mention. Second thing is, when your alarm goes off or when your eyes open and it's time to get up, bounce out of bed and I think get excited about a new day and a new possibility, a new opportunity for who knows what could happen in your day. And I think if you can start each day with a pos possibility mindset, then you're going to bounce out of bed and it's going to be really exciting. Now, a couple of things that I love to do first thing in the morning just to get me positive and get me energised. The first thing is a thing called morning pages where if I've got any negativity in me, I want to get it out as fast as I can. So I write all that rubbishy stuff on a sheet of paper and then I destroy it and I throw it away. So that's the first thing. The second thing I do is I write a list on a piece of paper that I keep of all the things that I'm grateful for, maybe three to five things that I'm incredibly grateful for. Then I do some exercise because that makes me feel wonderful. Now, whatever exercise that is for you, that's okay. Something that gives you energy. And then the fourth thing I do in the morning is I eat a healthy breakfast to fill me full of wonderful nutrients and to start my day on a very positive note. Now, if you start your day like that, I can guarantee you will have a good day. Now, while your day is moving and grooving, I would suggest that you set an alarm on your phone, on your computer, on your device for every 60 to 90 minutes because if you're working you're in front of a computer or you're doing something that's quite intense, we need a regular break from that to keep us energised, to keep us positive, to keep us in the right space. So every 60 to 90 minutes, you'll hear a bing and your alarm will go off and you do something. You might stand up and have a stretch. You might go for a walk. You might phone a friend and have a laugh, a joke. Maybe you'll do a breathing or a meditation for five minutes. Maybe you go and have a snack, 
a healthy protein based snack and the protein's really important because if you're just snacking on biscuits or crackers or fruit or carbohydrate that can give you a, a sugar spike but it will drop later in the day so by adding some protein like nuts or some cheese or some yogurt to your snack it helps give you that energy that will keep you going through the afternoon maybe you go and have a glass of nice fresh beautiful purified water but every 60 to 90 minutes you do something that takes a few minutes not a lot of time just to break your routine to give you that energy to help you feel amazing and to keep you going through the day when you get to the end of your work day or study day or whatever it is then i want to recommend that you insert what I like to call the third space. Now, what does that mean? Well, there's actually a book called The Third Space. And what it means is you add a little transitional space in between your work and your whatever's next. Because if you have a work day and it's stressful and you're a bit cranky, you don't want to take your cranky pants into your family life or into your social life or into your hobby. So you insert a third space, which might be a song that you love to listen to. Again, it might be exercise. It might be ringing someone that you like to talk to. Uh, it's something that will get you into a good space so that when you get home, you can spend quality time with your family, you can be creative, you can have a great social evening or spend quality time with your hobby. So, first step is, Start your day on a positive note. Bounce out of bed. Focus on what's important. Energize yourself. And every hour or so throughout the day, just refresh, re-energize, refocus. After your work day, add your little third space, that little transitional space before you go into the final part of your day. And if you do that, create that kind of routine, you will have an amazing day every single day. You'll be energized, you'll be positive, you'll be focused, and you will live a long, happy, healthy life. Carol, tell us a little bit about what you do in your routine to help keep you energized and fabulous. Well, well Andrew, yeah, that was awesome to hear all about those things there. And to make me feel a bit better that I'm actually doing a lot of those things myself. So, <laughs> so getting up out of bed, I do like to do the exercise in the morning because then everyone's amazed how much energy I have during the day because I've been up there doing some exercise, writing the things I'm grateful for, having those healthy snacks, the protein snacks, having the, the water. And even at the end of the day, I might just go for another little, like in your third space that you refer to, go for a little walk and then come back. And having that alarm just to remind yourself to take a break. Well, I don't do that, but I think it's automatic now. So thank you very, very much. That's been fantastic. So we're going to see you again soon with the next wellness app. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Carol. See you later. Right. 
two steps, how many? Two steps to the right. Let's go, right together, right touch, left together, left touch. Right together, right touch, together, left touch. So again, just keep this really small. You can even do it sitting on the chair, but please try and stand up and join in. Now, once you've got this, disco. That's it. Right together, right. Left together, left. Keep it going. Never too late for love. This is where we meet some inspiring couples that may have met over 50, over 60, over 70, even over 80 and have found love again later in life. Today we're going to be talking with Camilla and Phil and hearing their really inspiring story. Hi Camilla and Phil, welcome to Over 50 So What? And welcome, yes. welcome to this exciting new segment never too late for love and I can't wait to share your amazing story with everybody today. So just tell us first, Camilla and Phil, where are you this minute? We're at our new property um, in Bedalla, New South Wales. Where were you living when you first met? Uh, I was living in uh, Bombardier in the Shoalhaven um, in New South Wales on the south coast. And I was living in Crookwell up on the southern tablelands in New South Wales. It was about just over a two hour drive. What were you doing for jobs you two at the time? I was working as a registered nurse um, in a children's ward in the Shoalhaven Hospital. Um, so I was on shift work. That didn't uh, help me with trying to find somebody, I might add. Shift work's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Phil? I 
was working full time as an electrician for an electrical distribution company um, and being on standby as well so I could be out working two o'clock in the morning also. You're living miles apart from each other, hours apart. You're both doing odd hours, night shift, day shift, weekends all over the shop. How on earth were you ever going to connect and meet with each other? So that's what we want to find out. How did this all happen? Oh, I was for a long time on my own and I decided that I didn't really need a relationship. It was my daughter, my 17 year old daughter that said, you know, mum, you just need someone to share your life with. You've got so much to offer. And I just looked at her and thought, what do you mean? I've got so much to offer. I, I've, I've been a business owner for 10 years. I'm on shift work. Um, I have a I didn't tell her this. I have a teenage daughter living with me. And I, so who would want me anyway? Um, and uh, I said, anyway, I could probably, I could probably just meet someone online. Oh, sorry, meet someone in the shopping centre, you know, because, you know, you just sit, meet them in the supermarket. And she said, but mum, you do your shopping online. And I went, oh, yes, where am I going to meet someone then? And what about you, Phil? Well, I'd also just come out of an unhappy marriage um, and that was finished uh, and I was quite happy to be on my own and I thought no I don't want to meet anybody yet there's no need well that's what I thought anyway <laughs> so both of you are thinking oh yeah, uh, yeah I'm fine on my own if it happens it happens I can't really I'm not putting any effort into it or any focus into it so then what happened well after my daughter said well, why don't you try going online? You do shopping online, so why don't you shop for a man online? <laughs> okay, how do I do that? And I had a look at RSVP and it's a little bit scary at first when you've never done anything like that before. But um, she took my photos and then I had to write my profile and uh, get it on um, online. So I did that. I was fairly particular. I thought at this stage of my life, no, I'm going to be very particular about what I want. And so. I wrote my profile and one of the important things in my profile is that my suitor would be uh, someone who had really good grammar. <laughs> and then this one hits the message button. <laughs> As I said before, I had no interest whatsoever. Um, but, you know, you're on the internet, you're surfing on the internet, looking around at various bits and pieces. And in those days, there was this constant barrage of ads on the sidebar of the internet browser for uh, dating sites, online dating sites. And I thought, no, that's ridiculous. I'm not even going to look at that. And I just kept on my merry way doing the internet thing for days. And uh, finally, it did get the better of me. <laughs> and I thought, well, is it possible to meet somebody online? Just started looking through the first couple of pages of ladies. And I thought, no, no, these ladies aren't for me. You know, and uh, I think I got to the third page and I saw this picture and these eyes just sang out to me. They were so beautiful. They just <laughs> laughed at me. And I thought, this lady is looking into my soul. And uh, I sent her a message straight away and then signed up straight away. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most incredible story. I've never, ever heard that before. Someone's just poking around, having a look. Oh, boom, that's it. I'm not, mm -hmm. I, I want to meet her. So that's. So obviously the uh, yes. universe was working in some miracle there. So and I was absolutely convinced that I wasn't going to meet anybody that way. <laughs> and Carol, I've only been online for five days. Ah. Five days. <laughs> and um, we chatted for hours and uh, because of our shift work, and in particular Camilla's shift work, mm. it was a real lottery when I got the chance to chat to her. So you chatted online for, what, about three weeks before you spoke on the phone? And then how long before you actually saw each other physically face-to-face? -face? <laughs> I've got to meet him. Oh, that's exciting but scary at the same time. <laughs> and I was terrified as well. <laughs> it's been an awfully long time since I dated anybody, about over 30 years. And where did you pop the question, Phil? Uh, we were parked overnight in the motorhome and uh, I got down on my knee in the motorhome. So, so yes, I, I proposed in the motorhome and Camilla accepted then. So the wedding was at your home in Bombardier. Your wedding. I did hear the police had to come out. Um, what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've got it. Well, I think for an older couple getting married at home, 
And if the police come around at midnight because it's too loud, I think that's wonderful. <laughs> we had some left early mm. um, and the police didn't come around once, they came around twice. So tell us, what would your words of advice be to someone that's over 50, over 60, even over 70, that, that's single about finding love in the future? I'd say don't give up. And um, if I was to quote Michael Bublé, I'd say, wherever you are, whenever it's right, you'll come out of nowhere and into my life. Oh, that's beautiful, honey. Oh. Well, Michael Bublé was our theme song, which was, what's mm. it called? I Just Haven't Met You just Yet. Just Haven't Met You Yet. That was my song I used to put mm. on all the time and just say, I just haven't met you yet. Um, I think if I had any advice for people, I won't look on such a romantic note because um, I feel... You need to be really grounded and know what you want uh, and, and question why you want a relationship. Because in the beginning, I didn't want one. But it's do, do you want someone to help live um, a life with you to experience all your uh, life's fun and challenges as well? Um, do you want someone because they're funny? Do you want someone because they're independent, financially stable? Um, maybe they've got a status symbol. What do you want out of this? Uh, do you want someone just as company? And I, I made a list. Um, and in it, I s had to be really specific about what I wanted. And I wanted someone who was at least um, 180 centimetres uh, tall, that um, he was financially stable, um, that he accepted my humour, uh, that um, we had similar goals in life, similar philosophies. Um, and I went through all this range of things, right, which you sort of want. And I also said that he had to have a full set of hair on his head. <laughs> <laughs> and he came out exactly in my, as in my list that I wrote, which I thought was pretty amazing when we both went through it it was like mm. oh my gosh look mm. at that um but the important thing is to say what you want as well as what you feel you can give to the relationship too such a good man in amongst it all you know he's a good man they go look for that too girls well congratulations to you both and um just proving that it's never too late for love it's never, never too, too late, late for, for love, love. <laughs> go for it Excellent. After watching the show today, what is it that you're going to do differently? I do hope that you try some of those tips that Andrew mentioned to help you bounce through the day. And if you'd like more information on Andrew, please just go to our website, carolohalloran.com. It's never too late for love. Please send us all your dating stories. Send them in. Facebook over 50 so what send us your stories or maybe you know someone who has a fantastic story and would be great on the show now we've talked about the importance of having a routine maybe a five minute fitness routine every day is just what you need so there's plenty of five minute fitness routines on YouTube over 50 so what just go to the playlist five minute fitness routines it's really going to help you feel better. Five minutes a day and you're on your way. I'm Carol. Keep active, keep connected and take care of each other. watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50, so what? <laughs>